so my name is Jennifer Good, and I come to you from Canada. I come to you uh, from Canada via Lyon. Uh, so I want to quickly just say that uh, while I'm here from far away, a few quick things that you might want to chat with me about. Well, I worked for Greenpeace Canada for about five years. Uh, I'm involved with uh, three graduate programs in Canada. So if any of you are graduate or would be graduate students who want to talk about possibilities in Canada, uh, find me. And last year I published a book called um, uh, Television and the Earth, Not a Love Story. That's it. Uh, if you're interested <laughs> in uh, television and stories and how they intersect with, uh, with the environment, I'd like to talk to, with you about that as well. Okay, so what I want to chat with you about right now is this, uh, the International Environmental Communication Association. And after today's uh, time with all of you, I have a proposition for you related to this at the end of what I'm going to say. So uh, stay tuned. This is where it starts. Uh, like all good stories, this starts with, uh, with exposition, uh, the context for all of the action. Here it is. This is the context for all of my action, uh, planet, planet Earth. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of context for uh, this conference, for this organization uh, from an academic uh, perspective, because really that's how the conference began, and I'm going to then uh, uh, draw in the need for a broader context. So if we're talking about environmental communication from an academic context, this might be the first ever environmental communication uh, art, journal article. It comes from, uh, we, sort of we found it as a result of an article that we, uh, I wrote with some colleagues about uh, the growth of environmental communication journal articles. So maybe 1948 uh, is sort of the start. But as you'll see, and this is the next stage in my story, this is the rising action portion of the story. It's, it's exciting from a geeky academic uh, uh, point of view because look at this blue line. That's environmental communication articles growing over the years. So uh, it doubles from uh, 84 to 85. And then between eight, 1985 and uh, 1990, it, it increases by 50% every year. So there's huge growth happening in uh, environmental communication uh, journal articles, but that's not the only place that environmental communication is starting to, to uh, get exciting, where there's starting to be this rising uh, action. Uh, people are starting to talk about environmental communication at conferences. Uh, so maybe the first ever, and some of you may want to tell me I'm missing some key thing that happened in your part of the world, but certainly in North America, we might say there was 1988 is the first panel that explores environmental communication with this title, Discourse of Environmental Advocacy. And then subsequently, so that's in 1988, in 1991, as part of the conference, as part of a, a first sort of conference on communication in the environment, it's called Conference on the Discourse of Environmental Advocacy. So we see that in 1991. After 1991, uh, it becomes the Conference on Communication in the Environment. It happens every other year at various locations throughout uh, the United States. So uh, they're happening in places like Alta, Utah, uh, Yellowstone. These are the covers of the proceedings. You can get yours online. I'll tell you in a moment where you can find them. Uh, Tennessee, New York, uh, Arizona, Ohio, Oregon, Georgia, uh, Illinois, uh, that's Georgia, and then uh, 2011 in uh, Texas. Okay, but this isn't the only way, the only place where people are coming together to talk about environmental communication. People are also uh, uh, finding each other online. This is an early example of people coming together online to talk about communication in the environment. This was run by Mark Meisner. Some of you um, may um, know about Mark. Uh, Mark was doing this all volunteer. Uh, part of his university's uh, was being hosted on his university's website. Uh, so people were coming together online, and people were coming together in journals. This is the Environmental Communication Yearbook, so that's the first incarnation in 2004. In 2007, Environmental Communication, a Journal of Nature and Culture is, uh, is born. But what people are starting to realize is that there's no central sort of umbrella under which all of these environmental communication things can take place. So we start to talk about it. 
uh, at the National Communication Association conference uh, as part of the Environmental Communication Division. We come together at the University of Maine. We're trying to figure out what might it look like to have an organization where environmental communication is happening. The International Environmental Communication Association is born uh, in 2011. There's the mission statement. And uh, last summer in Uppsala, it's a fun place to, to be and a, a fun place to say. In Uppsala, Sweden, uh, we met and we uh, had the first ever international version of uh, the Conference on Communication and, and the Environment. Now, the conference, the journal, uh, they all come under this sort of rubric of the International Environmental Communication Association. This is where it will be next summer. So you've missed the call for papers, if you, uh, but you can still come. Uh, this is Boulder, Colorado, the University of Colorado at Boulder. And uh, here's, here are some things I think we can think about and talk about, uh, you know, again, find me, let's chat. Uh, how best to involve the global community in the International uh, Environmental Communication Association? Should people who care about the environment even be traveling all over the world to talk about the environment? What does it look like to be an environmentally exemplary uh, conference? And here's the pitch to you folks. After spending the day with you, I'm thinking 2017, the International Environmental Communication should be meeting here in, in Bristol. So just, just saying, thanks. <laughs>